propagation of Jamaat Ahmadiyya. And um, even prior to that, he never rested. But uh, even coming to Europe, it was uh, again, uh, always it was at the front of his mind. During his short visit, uh, he visited many mission houses, uh, gave a lot of valuable advice to the missionaries who were based over here. One of the things that transpired at that time, that took place at that time, was a conference for missionaries who were based in Europe. It was easier for them to get together. And uh, a lot of uh, new ideas were put forward in this conference. All the missionaries who came together not only had the benefit of sitting with uh, the Muslim who seeking his advice and guidance, but also a lot of new suggestions were given whereby preaching, whereby spreading the message of Hamadiyat could be uh, increased and spread uh, at a much faster pace than before. And some of these were adopted as well. Uh, another key aspect of this visit was also the meeting with members of the Jamaat at that time in certain areas. Uh, uh, there were some very old families of um, the uh, Jamaat who were based either in the UK and some families in Europe, in, on the continent mainland that is as well. And uh, I had an opportunity to meet with as a Muslim and um, so after all of these, after a stay of a few months, then uh, as a Muslim Al-Anho, I returned to uh, Pakistan in uh, the September of 1953. Another brilliant accomplishment by Hudur is the initiation of the Hijri Shamsi calendar. It is uh, based on the solar uh, calculation system, but uh, for each month, a very appropriate name has been given, which is related to some very outstanding incident in the history of Islam. So in this way, he gave new names to all these uh, months of the year and uh, calendar and they always indicate to something very important happening uh, in the history of Islam. Like the names are for example, Sula, Tabligh, Aman, Shahadat, Hijrat, Ihsan, Wafa, Zuhur, Tabuk, Hikha, Nabuwat, Fatah. These are the 12 names and they are according to the a normal calendar, 12 months are there and based on the solar uh, calculations. His books and pamphlets, which number more than 200, show him to be an eminent divine, a discerning mystic, and an expert analyst of eternal verities. On the 27th of December, 1957, Hajat Khalifa Tulmasi II initiated a blessed project called the Vakfa Jadid. The primary objective of this project was to expand the missionary work to educate and impart religious training to the rural population inside Pakistan. कि अगर मुझे इसके लिए अपने कपड़े और अपनी जायदाद बेच के काम करना पड़े तो मैं वो भी करूंगा बस इतना इतना जज्बात जोश था उसमें खुदूर अपॉइंटेड साहिब ज़ादा मिर्ज़ा ताहिर अहमद एज इट्स फर्स्ट डायरेक्टर नाज़ीम इरशाद वक्फ जदीद प्रूव्ड टू बी द लास्ट इनिशिएटिव पुट बिफोर द कम्युनिटी बाय खुदूर अल मुसलम अदर इस्लाम तलका नबुआ بين ونبوءات حتى بخصوص أولاده وخاصة المصلح الموعود هناك نبوءة طويلة في اللغة العربية لكن مضمون هذه النبوءة أنه سوف يبارك له بذريته وأنه سوف يعطيه نسلا كثيرا وقال يقطع أباؤك ويبدأ منك ورأينا أن في بشكل خاص ما يتعلق بالمصلح الموعود يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى وفقه بأن خدم الجماعة 52 سنة وأيضا من أولاده الابن الأكبر مولانا ناصر أحمد الذي أصبح فيما بعد الخليفة الثالث للجماعة وأيضا الخليفة الرابع رحمه الله حضرة ميرزا طاهر أحمد وأيضا من بنته جاء أيضا 
ومن أخوه يعني بنته وابن أخوه جاء الخليفة الخامس حضرة ميرزا مسرور أحمد فهذه البركات رأينا أن من أولاده من أولاد المصلح المعود الخليفة الثاني ومن بناته أيضا جاء الخلفاء ورجال الذين حصلوا على مناصب عليا في الجماعة وخدموا الجماعة بكل حب وتفاني خدموا الإسلام في جميع أنحاء المعمورة The health of Khalifa Tulmasi II entered upon a prolonged process of slow but progressive decline, and the end came on the 8th of November, 1965, at 2.20 a.m. His demise shook the movement to its foundations. Every member of the movement was overwhelmed with grief, the depth and intensity of which were beyond measure. The shock was bewildering and baffling. It seemed that the vacuum thus created would be hard, if not impossible, to fill. Everyone, however, realized that the divine will was supreme, and no human being was immortal. The members of the community converged in large numbers upon Rabva for the purpose of seeking comfort and consolation for each other's company, and to pay their tribute of love and devotion to the sacred memory of the Holy One who had guided the destinies of the movement for more than half a century, and had given freely of his love, sympathy and support to everyone, without discrimination. On the 9th of November, 1965, at 4.30 p.m., Hadrat Mirza Nasir Ahmad, Khalifa Tulmasi III, led the funeral prayer. Almost 50,000 faithful who had converged upon Rabva, having paid their last respects, joined in the funeral prayer. Huzur was later laid to rest in the Bahishti Makbara next to Hadrat Ahmadjan's final resting place. The death of Hadrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad, Khalifatul Masi II and Muslim Aud brought to end a most eventful career, resplendent with far-reaching enterprises, leadership and guidance. A man of astonishing strength and unending love a versatile genius and dynamic personality. There was hardly a sphere of contemporary thought and life during the past half century, from religious scholarship, missionary organization, and even political leadership, on which Hadrat Muslim Aoud did not leave the deepest of imprints. <laughs> Zoo.